So different isolation mechanisms are going to lead to different modes in which speciation can occur. And the three we're focusing on are allopatric, sympatric, and parapatric or patric, depending on how you want to say it. So allopatric is the most common mode of speciation and it occurs due to physical separation. So we're thinking spatial isolation here, like geographical isolation, as the physical environment changes and prevents interbreeding between members of the same population. Now with a physical barrier between the groups of the population, new selection pressures actually arise, okay, and it's creating that in that new environment. And genetic drift, like the founder's effect or like a bottleneck effect, can lead to divergence in the characteristics between these groups. Now, the circumstances around allopatric speciation are going to depend massively on the time scale. So an aquatic environment here might be impacted by the creation of new rock on the bottom of the ocean floor. Terrestrial ecosystems might get a really quick influx of water if there's flooding. Uh, to re sorry, to plate tectonics, you know, in continental drift, that's a very slow process, but it can create mountains and other land masses over really long periods of time. And climate change can alter habitats, increase the sea levels and have... Ha Habitat fragmentation can occur as a result of human activities as well. Now, sympatric spe speciation, it doesn't require a physical boundary to isolate, and it can actually occur in the same habitat in the same location. So when an organism finds a really small microhabitat within the larger habitat, it can become so niche in terms of resources and organism interaction that it actually exerts an ever so slightly different selection pressure uh, to that of the other you know, species in the rest of the habitat. So the organism population can become so dependent on and adapted for this microenvironment that it doesn't interact with any of the members of the species outside of this tiny niche. And this is a really common occurrence with plants and it leads to very niche, niche isolation. So sympatric speciation might occur because of sexual selection. So the features some organisms look for in a mate um, will differ amongst the variation in the population. And the changes to the allele frequency that allow for a subpopulation to occupy an ecological niche that no longer overlaps with the original population, it's occurring mostly by chance. And this usually leads to an a decrease in competition between the original and the new subpopulations over time. And we can link this to types of selection, right, by considering the growth in this subpopulation would actually stabilize them for the trait that gave them the ecological advantage in that tiny microhabitat. Now, parapatric speciation is quite rare, and while it doesn't need any rigid physical, like geographical barriers, it's still a kind of geographical isolation that's occurring. You've got to consider a habitat that's so widely variable, so vast, or you know, spatially large, that it spans a huge range of microhabitats. And this means that organisms are only inclined to mate with those in the you know immediate vicinity. So with variable selection pressures at different parts of the huge habitat, organisms that are far apart are going to end up with different allele frequencies. So depending on what trait suits them best based on the niche in that part of the habitat, subpopulations are going to form. Now initially there's going to be some gene flow in between the subpopulations and a kind of hybrid zone you know, sort of presents itself, but this becomes more and more difficult over the larger area with non-random mating. So they, the mates selecting with each other based on their little preferences that are close by. And eventually that gene flow is going to stop as fewer and fewer organisms are mating with one another and the different subpopulation. And over time, speciation occurs as more changes accrue in their gene pool until they're completely separate species. Now, these speciation processes occur at really different rates, depending on the ecological conditions at the time. So we know that after periods of mass extinction, the evolutionary radiation that occurs means that speciation might be occurring in a few thousand years. But over other periods of time, we're talking species might diverge in time frames like millions of years, right, gradually accruing the changes uh, from the subpopulations. So more and more speciation events occurring over time leads to macroevolution, and it's creating that diversity or that biodiversity that we see on our planet. So we've covered off on three of these and we will come back and do this one in a later lesson.